everybody I've got something a little bit special for you today um, this is Chanel Egoist this is safely ensconced in my probably top 10 favorite perfumes that I've ever worn own um, and I have had this bottle probably apart from one or two maybe longer than any other bottle that I have in my current perfume wardrobe the review I did of this particular perfume was now is now like a few years old and this particular rendition of Chanel Egoist is the only one that I've actually known so I've not smelled up until now I've not smelled any older vintages and any like very very current bottles so this one um, I've kind of estimated to be around 2014-2015 batch and for what I recognize it as for how I know it I, I love this perfume now I was lucky enough um, to have one of my very kind uh, friends from Instagram send me a sample of a bottle that they have had since the early 90s. Now, all I can tell you is that it's pre-1994, so it's no, no newer than a 1994 bottle, possibly even older. And this is going to be the first time that I'm going to get to compare vintage what probably is was the original formulation of egoist um taking into account the the age of it and how much that might have been likely to change because it's really difficult to gauge how much a perfume changes um, with age but without further ado i'm going to do a little bit of a comparison now today because i wanted to keep this fresh today was the first time that i did a side by side spray so i've got the dry down going on this arm for the vintage egoist and on this arm for my bottle of egoist They're, they've been on my arm for nearly three hours now um, and then i'm gonna do a new spray just to talk about the opening of each so please um if you want to stop the video now feel free to check out my my review of egoist even though it's a few years old and I'll pro it's probably worth re-reviewing some of these perfumes but i'm going to spray on this one two sprays and two sprays of this early 90s egoist So immediately, immediately in the opening, there, there is a very discernible difference. So what I pick up in the newer Egoist is that it is spicier. Um, the sandalwood accord is there, but what I pick, a lot, uh, pick up a lot in this new one is actually uh, ambrette seed um, or muskmallow. And it's got this kind of very nice spicy muskiness that goes along with with this sandalwood accord. Now the sandalwood accord is is lovely, but it's but it's a light sandalwood accord. When I smell the original, I don't get any of that spiciness. Okay, so you got to got to take into account how old this perfume is now. Um, it might maybe. When it first came out, um, it's probably lost a bit of its top notes, but I'm, I'm of the understanding that the bottle has been kept in good in good condition. What I pick up here is a lot more really dark, heavy woodiness. Now, if you look at the note pyramid for Egoist, there's a couple of interesting notes uh, amongst the many others. They are rosewood and mahogany. Now, I don't really know what a mahogany um, uh, absolute or, what it, or whatever it's distilled into mahogany oil um, smells like. Rosewood I'm more familiar with, and I really pick up that with a really dark, heavier wood along with the sandalwood. So that's where it's different. The opening here is a bit lighter. It's a bit spicier. Um, 
probably a touch more floral. Like I, I kind of smell, I, I pick up the rose and the carnation a lot quicker in the opening of the newer one. And some of that spiciness might be coming from this carnation accord. But here it's a very, very deep, dark, woody accord. Um, the, this combination of woods is, is at times almost like oud-like. Um, I've smelled some oud perfumes that have a very similar accord. They might be mixed with sandalwood as well and have those other woods there. But to me, it's definitely uh, darker and woodier is the main difference in the opening. Now, as they dry down, I can still smell the egoist. I, I've, never, I've never complained about the performance of this, this edition of egoist, um, but it does, what, how this typically behaves is that it transitions into, um, you know, this rose sandalwood accord and there is a little bit of sweetness from cinnamon as well. Um, but essentially it dries down into this very lovely, um, mellow, buttery, slightly salty sandalwood accord. The dry down, I can tell you, is probably a bit more prominent on the older one, as probably you would expect. Um, but there is definitely more of that dark woodiness to this. I can smell the rose here. Um, there, there is less, what, I, what I'm really picking up is that there's less spiciness. Um, I can smell less of that carnation accord in here and I can actually smell more tobacco in this older version of Egoist. But I will say this, that even though they are pretty different, um, again, Chanel have done a really good job of whether they have to reformulate because of scarcity of materials or for IFRA regulations. They've done a, a really good job of keeping the spirit, at least, of, of this wonderful perfume um and you know the fact that i fell in love with this version of egoist speaks volumes and yes if i'd known this version and maybe came to this new version uh, after a lot of experience i may have been disappointed although it's it's it would have been only if i really loved that heavy depth of the woods in this original egoist like I, i'm really really loving the this what i think is a rosewood that comes out a lot more there's less of that ambrette that i can smell in this one as well so you know if i had to it's really difficult because obviously i love this and i think this smells fantastic as well and I think what I will need to do in the coming days is wear this probably I would like to spend a few days alternating between the two so basically wear egoist for several days in a row but on each day wear a different one and just I think I'd be better off picking up more of the nuances and, and differences I, the differences are there um, if you are interested in smelling, uh, you know, that you probably find some vintage egoists on, on eBay or wherever, wherever used perfume are sold. I never looked myself, um, but I'm glad I smelled this because at least I know that, um, this current one is kind of faithful to its, to its origins. And I have no idea, uh, and people might think nothing will happen, but I, I have no idea how this might age in the future. If I, you know, if this was nearly 30 years old, would it smell different? Would I be getting a lot more of the woody notes and bass notes? I don't know, but this is aged like a very fine wine, apparently. I wish... Um, 
you know, the, this, these are times when you wish you could go back and smell it when it first came out, uh, but it, it does smell beautiful. Uh, oh, definitely, definitely more tobacco. The rose is a little bit richer in this. All the, everything that just smells a little bit richer and has a little bit more depth on my skin. This older vintage seems to be more tenacious and hold on to its to its accords a little bit more, um, but you know I still love this. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be longing for a vintage bottle. What I will do is wear the complete shit out of this and really enjoy it because I'm not a believer in hoarding vintage. If you've got vintage because you love how it smells, wear it and enjoy it, and then move on. Uh, that's all for me today. I hope you found that interesting. I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts. I know I've already had a couple of comments on Instagram pretty much saying similar things to what I'm smelling. So there is a little bit of a consensus, but I'd be interested to know what you, what you think. Um, to me, both versions are lovely, a little bit different, but lovely nonetheless iconic perfume Chanel Egoist and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.